Um, so I'm just going to speak from this, Megan, because there's so many things I want to say about you, but I'm going to keep it brief. Um, so Megan, like myself, is first and foremost the mother. She's the mother of a, an 11-year-old little girl named Molly, and she will, I'm sure, share that with you. She's also the chairperson of Fast Australia. Um, Megan is um, a board member of Fast US, and she quali does qualification and information systems um, science that she has used in order to help establish with her colleagues in Australia the Global Angelman Registry. So if you have questions about registry, she's who you want to go to and talk to about that. If you don't join the registry, she's who you're going to have to fight. She's short and small but mighty. So go ahead, go outside and join the registry. Megan? Thanks, Alison. Um, so hopefully you guys are all on the Wi-Fi now and um, you'll indulge me with a little bit of time. I know we're running late for your lunch, but um, I think you've heard already how important this project is. Um, there's links at the bottom of these slides. For anyone who wants to jump on right now, you can do that. We've got the conference code. This is a little poll that I'm going to use today, so it should be quite easy for you to open that up with your phone if you're on the Wi-Fi. We're just going to start with a little bit of fun and hopefully... Um, if technology is friendly to me, um, we're going to illustrate that it has a lot of power. So who's excited to be in Chicago this weekend? Awesome. Hopefully you're able to tell me with your phones. Okay, so I'll go back a slide and you can... Sixteen people, huh? Come on. All right, I don't want to take up too much time, so we'll, we'll see how we go. Tiny, T-I-N-Y dot C-C forward slash fast, F-A-S-T, poll, P-O-L-L, -L, all one word. The Wi-Fi is fast 2018. Okay, got, we've got a few people on it, so we'll move forward and, and we'll see if we can just illustrate it with a few people here. But if you can get onto it while I'm talking, it'd be great. So the next question I want to ask those who were able to connect, are, are you guys aware of the project? If you're not able to connect, perhaps raise your hand and let me know if you've heard of the project before. I'll vote on mine so I count for another one. <laughs> All right, Christy, have you forwarded me? Okay, radio. This is what happens when technology is not working properly. We're going to go forward and hopefully. So we've got two people that are already involved in the registry. I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, I'm not actually going to talk a lot about the project, the structure of the project today. I'm going to talk more about where we've been and where we're going. I'm just going to give a really brief overview. Um, for those of you who don't know, look for people that have Join Angelman research stickers on them. And the table out the front, there's a registry table out there. You can find a lot more about the project. So basically what I'm going to do is try and convince those of you who haven't joined to join up and the people that are joined where we're going next. So just a really brief rundown. It's online. It's driven by you as caregivers. It's secure and it has an IRB approval. And these are the types of information that we collect. So some of the goals that we've kicked, this year we published our second, or since we saw you last, we published our second research paper in the Journal of Intellectual Disability on the project. We joined up um, in a collaboration, an Australian collaboration designed to promote um, speed towards clinical trials. So we've joined up with a muscular dystrophy registry and a big research institution in Australia. We've got matched government funding to make sure that the registry is clinical trial ready. 
I'll actually talk to you a little bit more about that and you'll understand that a little bit later. What we've done also is we've grown the, grown the project since I saw you last by 60%. We've gone up to over 800 participants so far. So hopefully we're able to reach 1,000 by we finish this. Just a little graphic of where they are. So well done in the US. Three, 355 people from the US have joined. Um, I'm sure we can do a lot better than that. So also some cool things that we can do with your data. We can do things like custom queries, something like this. So you can see quickly before um, the last presentation, you heard about how you might be streamlining or restricting participants in a trial to ensure the best results. This is a sort of example of how you might find that population. Oh, hang on. This is just an example of an analytical platform that we'll have up on our website soon. It, of course, it's designed for people that do those sort of queries. The little video is just showing you how easy it is to do that and how quickly you can do it. And they're actually querying percentages of people who can walk and crawl. And what we'll do is once we've got, a, once we've got that online, we'll give you a bit of help to be able to do something like that yourself. You can present graphs for presentations using the information that we've got. 65% of, of individuals in the registry have suffered with reflux at some stage. So this will help you knowing that on the onset of a diagnosis, this is something that might be going on with my child. We talked a lot about constipation yesterday as well, and I know it's a big issue for families. You can see quite clearly that 60% of parents resolve it with diet. All this information is helpful to recruit for clinical trials and research projects and it saves time and money. Everything is pre-populated. All your information, your natural history, where your child's at development-wise, what medications they're on, if you fill out the registry, it will all be there for researchers to be able to be used. You can do things like custom modules or surveys, and we talked before about um, collecting some new information perhaps on communication and talking to talking to the community, it's really, really easy to add questions into the registry. So anything that's not there, we can access you if you're there, and we can add a new question into there. So great, it, is, it seems to be working a little bit now. So that's fantastic. So this is an example of how you can use the registry technology to reach people. Obviously, we're using direct poll with this. Um, the registry will be a lot more reliable. But what we're going to be able to do is send things directly to your phone and you can participate in answering questions for research, surveys, uh, in clinical trials, patient reported outcomes. So instead of having to complete a log or report back to your clinic, you can do it straight from your phone and send it back through the registry. So I want to do something, I want it, perhaps a raise of hands for people who think that using gestures is the most effective communication for your child. Does anyone think they could count that? What about if you had the information there? You can't count hands up in a room, you can't count effectively, you could do it from a Facebook poll, but you can't translate that back into meaningful research. So 70% of our kids use gestures as their main form of communication. The next thing we're going to be doing is looking at creating a unique number for your child based on a system that the NIH has. So any study that you've been in or any other study that you would be in in the future, we have the capacity to link them. So if you've been to a natural history site or a clinic and you have this number, we're working really hard to make sure that you don't have to do things twice. I don't know. We've, we've also got a new section in the registry where you're able to upload an EEG. So it's really simple. It's under a diagnostics panel in the registry. I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to move forward for it. We're actually going to send out a lot of information to you as how you can get your copy of the EEG in the format that we'd like in the registry. 
And with that, I'll send this video so that it's really clear for everyone how they can get that really valuable information back into the registry. For those of you who've been in the registry now for 12 years or longer, we haven't asked you to do an annual review yet. I'm sorry about that. That will be coming very soon. You'll get an email for us and what it will do is it'll go through, ask you things. It might be a bit hard to see on the screen. Um, it'll show you what you indicated last time you visited the registry and ask you to check that that value is correct or if it's changed. And that'll help us create that longitudinal data that we need. You'll also be getting an email soon if you're a participant to ask to nominate who your clinician is. And this is really important so that we can get clinicians to verify your information. Once you do that, they'll get an email from us and it will tell them that Molly Cross's mum has said that you're her clinician. Here's some information on the Angelman Registry Project. Would you like to participate? And they'll get a login. And then they'll be able to do something like this. You know, this is a really blown up screen, so it, it's quite hard to see. But it'll say something like, it will show the value that I have entered for Molly, and it'll allow the clinician to confirm that what I'm saying is correct. So we've got a few things to go. We've got lots of things to go. It's, it's an ever evolving project. One of them is actually to make it a bit prettier. So you'll notice when you go through the registry that um, you might answer no, something's not applicable to you, and it, there's a whole lot more that aren't applicable that follow from that. We'll be doing things like tidying that all up. At the moment, it's really been running at the gate, trying to get all these features ready for everyone to go. So it, it will look sexier, much like this gentleman here, very soon. <laughs> It's often, um, for those of you who've heard me speak about this before or, or rant on Facebook that you should join, I just wanted to illustrate that it's not just me. We've got a, a team of governance, we've got two um, principal investigators and one of them's in the room here today from Australia, Dr. Hoistler or Honey. She's way over the back here, but we'll, we'll point her out or she'll be out at the table if you want to talk to her. We've got a development team at the Murdoch University, Queensland University of Technology doing innovation, Clarivate Analytics in Boston. So it's a big team. And yesterday we talked a lot about that, um, about this project or not this specifically, but the need to collect information at ABOM. So I wanted to sort of illustrate the people that were ABOM, at ABOM yesterday. Can I just get you guys to stand and, and help show that the importance of these people want you to join as well. It's not just me. We're hoping that, you know, I'm not the only one ranting out here. There are a lot of people that want you to be part of this. So for those of you, you can always get a donut into a, into a slideshow. For those of you who have started, finish what you started, please. Finish putting the information in. I know it takes a lot of time. But if I was to ask you to go and participate in an actual bricks and mortar clinic, it would take you a lot more time and cost you a lot more money. And most likely you're taking your angel with you. Wait, see, look at that. We have 36 more people I was going to ask. Who might participate now? From your phone to sign up, this is how easy it is. And this isn't the whole project. This is just jumping in and getting your name down so that when you get home, you can finish it. Okay, there is, it does play. It was going to show you, it's actually quite easy. Um, the link's on the page here. It should take you probably about a minute to get your name in there. Get an email to confirm that you're part of the project. Then what I would do is set aside an hour or so of time when your angel isn't at home with you. Grab a cup of coffee, a beer, a glass of wine, sit down at your computer, get a notepad and start working your way through it. You can always come back to it. You don't have to do it all at once. And I suppose in closing, I just wanted to say, be in it. Don't just be in it, be it. Be the research. Yeah, well, how about I give you two minutes of uncomfortable silence for you to jump on your phone and get your name in the project now? Because I'd really love to see a bit more than 36 new subscriptions. I'd love to see that after today, we hit our thousand. Thank you very much, Megan.
We're not ending because you have two minutes to fill out your things. Once you've signed up, come and see us at the table at the front. I want everyone to have one of these blue stickers on. This shows that you're part of the project and you're contributing to research. But you don't get one unless you register. So you're embarrassed if you're not walking around with a blue sticker on your uh, lapel. Actually, what I didn't say too is another incentive to sign up is that we'll have a corporate donor matching your sign up, donating back to research. So it's a win-win. We have $10 back to research, donated to FAST with every new sign up this weekend. Great, thank you. You have a question? You can scream. Scream real loud. We had uh, signed up a long time ago when it was first being promoted, and I just checked today, and my account's locked out because of inactivity. Did we lose all our data and have to do it again? Or no, definitely not. No. I, the curator should get a message that that's happened and contact you, but I might come see you and make sure that that does happen. Should I start the question over? I'm not sure if everybody heard. Um, my question is for the uh, clinician area of the registry. Uh, right now we have our neurologist loaded in there for my son. Should we add additional physicians that follow him regularly or do you think that our neurologist will suffice? You can definitely do that, but what I'd probably do is pick the person who you think you might be able to go to to understand the whole syndrome. We registered uh, last year or whenever T Tucker was diagnosed, but we haven't gone through all the forms and we're not really sure what is designated for us and what's designated for clinicians, uh, what we can fill out or what has to be confirmed. Is there any way to a how-to? Sure. Uh, I haven't actually got a how-to, but that's a good point. We'll get that together. But everything that you see when you log in is for you to fill out. And if you have any questions, just contact the curator or reach out to us on Facebook. The clinician will actually have a separate login that will show only what he or she needs to fill out. 